Hi, this is Joe Riem of Scary Bug Games, and this is the game I've been working on for about a year now. It's called Mechagami. It's a Flixel-based uh, Metroidvania-style game in which you play a robot that can transform into five different shapes. Uh, you start out as just the robot, and you see early on you get this shape, which is inspired by the tank from Space Invaders. Uh, each of the forms that you get in this game are inspired by a classic arcade game of the late 70s slash early 80s. Um, as you can see, your standard Mario-style platforming uh, plays a big role at the very beginning. This is because, as a Metroidvania, you need to be able to run and jump. Something I discovered early on while testing different ideas for this game was that if I made the robot form be something you got much later, the initial game of driving around in a tank that couldn't jump and could only go up inclines was not that much fun. Uh, this game was originally going to be just an arcade game where you had a tank from Space Invaders, the missile launcher from Missile Command, and the rocket ship from Asteroids, and various enemies would attack you, and you'd have to transform to respond. Uh, I kind of had this idea around the same time I was running a contest for Flash Game License. We were doing like one of those uh, short period dev contests, and I thought up the uh, theme, which was Metamorphosis, and this was sort of the idea I had for that. And I wanted to see what other people came up with. And there were some cool entries, but that was a long, long time ago. Um, so as you can see here, this is a very Space Invaders inspired room. You've got the floor on the ground, speeds up your tank form. Um, and these squid octopus and green bug guys are directly inspired by the shapes from Space Invaders. Uh, here we've got the force field, because any good metric game needs to have things you can't open unless you have a certain power. In this case, shooting that power symbol with anything will destroy the force field, but later on that power symbol becomes harder to destroy with earlier weapons. You have to get things like the missile launcher, which can pass through force fields. Uh, here we have the super high jump boots. These spiders are uh, sort of inspired by the lead character from VVV, BBB, Terry Cavanaugh's indie game from a few years ago. So they literally just flip their gravity randomly and then walk towards you. Um, okay, so now I've got high jump. This game does not have a double jump like most Metroidvanias uh, done by indies do. Uh, it does have an infinity jump though. And that is because I wanted to have a sort of a flat button style uh, gameplay like Joust. So you get this little jump jet that just gives you a little boost and you can kind of tap up and flap. But you've got other forms that you can fight in, so. Uh, yeah, this is a room where there's a power up that lets you shoot forward in tank mode. Uh, so your idea is, the idea here is that it's really easy to pass through the bottom part. Probably take out some of these enemies though. Uh, you can kill those spiky guys, little spiny beetles, really easily with that. Um, but without it, you have to go over, which is a little bit harder, because you've got to deal with the spiders and the crickets that are going to jump on you. And you can see here, uh, this is the tile map, and it's not done. I have lots of detailed tiles that I can put in there. I just I'm working on the actual format of the game, or format of the map, before I put in details, because I already have an entire set of maps for this game that I'm not going to use, because I designed them based on running around doing things, and not really based on getting the power-ups and doing that sort of lock and key system you have to do. Yeah, so this is actually a sequence where you're supposed to swap between the tank and the, the jumping. And speaking of sequences, um, I am designing in purposeful sequence breaks. So you can do special things to get around some of these rooms and not have to deal with them. Uh, the last three rooms I was in, you could actually sequence break out of without having to visit them. I'll probably do a video on that too. So this one shows that the bad guys can destroy tiles, which is one of the secrets of the sequence break. Because you get up to this side, the other side of that block, 
uh, you can get one of those green guys to shoot at you. Um, so now I have the forward shooting ability. This was originally going to be an artillery sort of th launching trajectory, but um, making it go straight is actually just works better for the gameplay. It's easier to design puzzles around that. Here we've got the little octopi, the quadro pi, quadrupedes. Um, so part of the original game design for this was that your different forms would do better against different enemies, and the space invader en enemies, you're obviously, obviously supposed to use the space invader's tank. So this tank actually does more damage, and these enemies, not these enemies, um, the space invader enemies that you see over there, actually uh, become enraged when you attack them and don't kill them in one hit. Um, as you can see, they can attack each other a little bit with explosions. The regular hits don't hurt each other, but explos explosions will do splash damage. Um, so the squid will rush you, and the octopi will split into two and rush you. Um, yeah, up here we can see that the force field actually reflects back at you. These are carbonite. You're supposed to get an item later that lets you break those. And here we're about to get the th third form. You can sequence break past this a little bit, but it's not really that useful. Boom. So you can see you can destroy multiple locks at once, which is good for taking out big clusters of enemies. But as I said, the space invaders will react kind of badly to that. Uh, these blocks here let you sequence break. You can also you can't shoot below yourself with the tank or with the missile launcher. Uh, that's for puzzle reasons, and also because it's really easy to hurt yourself with your own attack that way. So here I'm gonna, as you can see, get some health pickups there. Um, you can hit shift to cycle through all of the forms. You can also just directly transform by hitting the numbers that are on the bottom there. So these guys are good to take out with the missile launcher. I'll probably change the design of this room a little bit. It's a little weird. Um, okay. So here we're going to see, I didn't show the earlier one, but the sort of side room where you could go that leads to a dead end. That's standard Metroidvania design. Show you what you can't do yet. You can see there's a little space invader there frozen in carbonite. This is planet Osiris, which is an amalgam of Mars and ancient Egypt. Sort of pyramids on Mars, kind of dealy. Here's our first mini boss, or boss fight. Uh, this guy is Octomom. Haha. <laughs> Uh, it can fire its little wave beam, it can fire this sequence of attacks, which will go left and right. And then whenever you damage it, it spawns up to eight little babies that seek you out, which sort of requires you to... Ow, ow, ow! As you can see, um, when you're in a boss fight, you're stuck in the, in the screen. So you can... Blast away at them, do more damage with this with this form, but that form's not great at dealing with the little guys because you can't. Well, I guess you can shoot sideways. But still, it's, you can't shoot diagonally. And I died. Uh, right now, when you die, you just respawn back in the same room you got into. I'll probably add a um, more elaborate checkpoint system later, but I am going to have infinite lives because non-infinite lives are silly. Who wants that nonsense? Ah. These blue areas not only make you go faster in tank mode, but um, they refuel your ship in rocket mode. And I'll probably also have them regenerate your health when you're in missile launcher mode to make sort of sitting here a more viable option. 
also probably end up limiting the amount of missiles you can fire at once. I plan on adding a um, cave story style power-up system where collecting little trinkets as you fight enemies gives you extra powers, uh, or powers up whatever weapon you're currently using. So you can have a little bit more variety there without having to add a bunch of more permanent power-ups. And then that's something to worry about losing when you get killed, because I don't want to have game over, but I do want to have some kind of penalty for dying, which isn't really in there right now. So taking away some of your power seems like it's fair. And then also gives you that extra thrill of continuously collecting things, which pleases your lizard brain. That's some game development psychology for you. Okay, this boss fight is going on a really long time, which I think is good. Um, you can beat it much faster if you pay more attention to what you're doing. I like that you can do different, like this is a, sort of a Mario strategy. If you jump on the enemy a bunch of times, okay, it's dead. So it died, so now when I come back into the... Er, first of all, I'm no longer trapped in the, lo in the screen. And second of all, when I come back, it's just a little guy now. And here we're going to get to the very end of the first world, Osiris. You jump down the volcano, and you unlock the rocket. Yay! The rocket flies just like, um, just like in asteroids. Uh, it takes fuel, which you can recharge by doing by landing on these blue things. Um, there is an infinite fuel power up, which is optional, and you have to go through a sort of a lunar lander-like sequence to get it. That's not quite implemented yet. So now we're in outer space. We're flying kind of out of control. If I run out of fuel, I still have a little bit of impulse control, so you can still move. And you've got these little arrows that point to where the planets are on the space map here. I'm out of fuel now, so much slower. Um, you can shoot. Uh, I appear to only be shooting one bullet right now, which is a bug. That's new to me. Oh, now it's not happening. That's weird. Okay. Sort of limited the amount of shots you have on screen at once, I think, and I don't have an error message for the shots are gone and the shots aren't vanishing. But anyway, that'll be fixed. And here you sort of see how you will be able to traverse through space. Uh, you can transform your different forms in space, but some of your forms are stuck. But there are power ups that will let them work in space, and so this was kind of fun. You can sort of fire a rocket and use Newtonian physics to move your guy around. Alright, and uh, there's more levels to go, and I'll probably show you sequence breaking next, but I'm still working on this game. It's taking a long time, but I'm having a lot of fun doing it, and transforming is a lot of fun. Thanks for watching!